Yeah, perfect. Really excited uh, to start. So maybe uh, just want to highlight one thing before we uh, officially transition to our panelists. I know you might have a lot of questions regarding you know, immigration, actual details about different visa, CPT, OPT, H1B, and all of that. So that won't be the focus of our session. Our main focus is on spe specific strategies, tips, and all the things that international students can do to um, influence perhaps hiring decisions or be more strategic and successful in the job search process. So that will be our main focus. And with that, I would love to invite uh, Saz. I would love you to maybe share a little bit more about you know, who you are, your career journey with our students. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Perfect, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Helen and team. Thanks for having me. It's always nice to meet uh, fellow T-Birds or uh, aspiring T-Birds, uh, as they would say. So my name is Sazari Naigam, and uh, I'm from Southern India. Uh, grew up in Chennai, uh, did my undergrad there, uh, and after that, worked a couple of years in, uh, uh, in IT consulting uh, with Infosys, and then came over to Thunderbird in 2009 for my MBA. Uh, and my primary focus when I was in campus was on a mix of things, international business, sales, marketing, and then did a uh, study abroad in China as well. And uh, during my Thunderbird, I did an internship at MTV Networks uh, for my first summer, and then uh, Capgemini Consulting for my second summer. And then right after Thunderbird, I started at EY, uh, Ernst & Young, and I was there with EY for a few years, and then went to AT Kearney, part of their strategy practice for a few years. And then now I'm with uh, FDI Consulting. Uh, I'm a managing director in our revenue growth practice. And uh, we specifically focus on advising uh, private equity and their portfolio companies on revenue growth strategies. Uh, and that's my background. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, Minas, thank you. Sure. My name is Minas. I have a Greek name, but I'm Brazilian. It's quite confused. So I, my whole career was focused on business, basically. When I left my country in 2015, I was managing a subsidiary, a subsidiary company in my state. So I moved to U.S. to learn this wonderful language, the English. And then I was accepted to study in Thunderbird. Um, so after Thunderbird, I accepted working on one offer to work on HP in Houston to work as a business development uh, program manager. So one year later, I was, I was set an offer to come to Costa Rica. So I, now I'm the beautiful Costa Rica in quarantine uh, with my whole family. I have four kids, four boys, 17 through nine years old, and my wife here. So here I'm focused on, on, on HP in develop business programs and business strategy to increase the sales of service for the company, basically. Perfect, thank you, Minas. Uh, Jenny. Hi, everyone. Minas, I'm definitely jealous that you're in Costa Rica right now. Yeah, yeah. so hi, yeah. Um, hi everyone. I'm uh, Yun Chen Li, and normally people know me and call me Jenny. And I'm currently um, a, um, working for Western Union and Internal Audit. And before I came to Thunderbird, I had, um, one year experience in public accounting and PwC and EY in external audit. And after I, um, I joined Thunderbird, I did my internship with my current company, Western Union, as an IT internal auditor. And after, after graduation, I joined um, Western Union and, and I'm currently based in Denver, Colorado. Thank you. Perfect, perfect. Uh, want to quickly set the stage a little bit. So the session's one hour. Uh, the first 30 sessions, I've, we've prepared some questions for our panelists. But then throughout the session, if you have any question, please enter those questions in the chat box and then we will address those at the end. And then the final 30, set, 30 minutes, we will be going through all the questions you have. I'll start with uh, Jenny, maybe. Uh, how, how, how would your classmates describe you when you were at Thunderbird? I will say the first things that people usually describe me is I'm active and outgoing. So I don't hesitate to join any events on campus. And so I'm always like outside, um, hanging out with friends, talking, networking, and 
yeah, and then that that was the first things that my friends will always say um, about me. And the second one, it's passionate. Um, it's I'm always passionate about what I'm doing, and I, I, I usually I set up goals and then I would do whatever I can to reach the goal. So for example, um, I, I, before I joined Thunderbird, I know that I want to do consulting lab. And at the time we need to compete with um, other classmates in order to get the opportunity to get into the consulting lab. So I was really passionate and prepared and to just reach the goal. And then the third one, it's positive. Um, um, that's actually one of my strengths when I do, um, I don't know if anyone else did the strengths finder testing and that's one of my strengths it's having that positivity so i always like to think um, things from a positive side and then also deliver my positivity to um, other people so that's basically the three like adjectives or things that my friends usually think of um, when they talk to me so super quick could you uh, talk about what's a gcl the consulting lab now, that's a required thing that everyone needs to do but maybe super quick that? Yeah, so I, I know that's a requirement at Thunderbird. That was actually something that you need to um, fight for the opportunity. So um, I went to Ecuador, Quito, Ecuador for a month uh, for a, a marketing consulting project with all my teammates. And, and I think that's, a, that's one of the best experience that I have ever had um, at Thunderbird. So definitely that's a good opportunity for everyone to do uh, at Thunderbird. Perfect. Um, and now I'm so curious to learn more about your first job ever. Like what was that? Ever. What was the experience ever? Yeah. Well, in my country, usually you're going to, you're going to be working earlier and you're going to, you're going to go to college and university at night. When you go 17, 18, you go to university for evening classes. So and when I was 18 years old, I started working on a retail company as a sales rep. That was my first job ever. And you know why? When you start working as a sales guy, it's probably because you don't have a choice. Because no one else grow dreaming to become a sales guy, you know. You want to be an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, or, you know, stuff like that. But that was the only thing I had. And I was so shy in that time. That was so tough for me. And you know why? I'm so happy for that happens to me. So that, that came for me as a fantastic opportunity to understand the business world. I, I started learning everything about the business, read everything. So one year after I became a manager of my team, I was just 19 years old, the youngest guy in my team, like leading 12 people in my first team. So I'm so grateful. Uh, I had no choice and I, you know, and I started working on, on business on the sales side of the, of the company. So that was the most important thing for me. And I learned, you know, the money comes better in that side. There's risky uh, work on sales, work on business, a lot of challenges, a lot of pressure. So I love it. And that's why I, I, I succeeded my career in my country, just because I learned how to work in business since the year this time. I think it's interesting, though, because I hear students uh, kind of trying to shy away from sales, but then the more we see different roles, different departments, everyone needs to sell in some shape or form, you know, the ability to influence and the ability to sell is just so important. Absolutely. You, you, no matter what you're going to do, I, I, I remember one of the last events I had on, on, on Thunderbird, I was with one of the, our professors, she invited us to, to a dinner in her, or her house. And one of the students, she was working uh, the whole life on sales. And she was asked for the professor, what are you going to do after Thunderbird? She told, oh, I want finance because I don't want to sell anything else in my life. And the professor told, Sherry DeLuke told, what are you talking about? The moment you stop selling, that's the moment you're going to start failing. You know, no matter if you're going to work in finance, you need to keep selling yourself, selling your ideas and communicating the best as possible. For sure, for sure. Uh, Sass, transitioning to you. Looking bad, your um, Thunderbird time, do, is there anything that you wish you have done differently or do more maybe? Um, differently, I think, uh, uh, I think my second year towards the final trimester, you know, when uh, 
you're still interviewing and uh, that's the last trimester and you haven't had a job yet, right? You, you get a little nervous and uh, you, you tend to skip a lot of classes because you want to do job search, right? Which I did. I mean, I, I skipped almost 60% of my classes in my last trimester, just did the bare minimum to get passed through, right? Because my focus was job search all the time. Um, looking back, I think that's the only thing I would, I would have course corrected. And I'm pretty sure a lot of uh, international students would go through the same thing. As it kind of gets to the last trimester, you're going to focus much more on job search and skip on classes, social events, and stuff like that. Um, you will you will end up okay. Just don't uh, skip any of those things. <laughs> we are not encouraging skipping classes, though, right? Yep, <laughs> but it's reality, right? It's what happens. Yeah, but um, what are some what were some of the specific things that you did that really worked uh, for your job search? Like uh, career search, I think uh, CMC is a great resource and they do a lot of good things for you. But I think uh, what worked personally for me was more um, LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn was a huge, huge thing for me. Uh, me and my, my friend at the time, I thought first thing was we formed like a friend group, right? I had a buddy who did job search with me to kind of keep each other honest, right? We have goals every day and we will create a plan like, okay, this week we're going to reach out to like 70 people, right? You know them, you don't know them, right? You try. My, my first ever job interview was someone that I didn't know, right? He was a random guy. I reached out for help and he responded back and, you know, he went through the interview process, right? So I think that's the only thing I would say it works really well. People have to just keep like focused. The, the success rate is pretty low. If you reach out to 100 people, two people respond back. Um, but that's just the nature of the game, right? It's a numbers game. Yeah, I think it's interesting because um, as a in, like former international student, when you came to the U.S., there's so many temptations, so many things to do. And then so if you don't have a very clear plan, it's really easy to derail. So having an yeah. accountability body is really helpful for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm uh, interested in learning more about kind of the culture shock, U.S. culture shock or even Thunderbird culture shock. I remember, I don't know if it's funny, but I think it's, uh, yeah, it's my personal experience. So I came to the Thunderbird in 20, uh, at that time, and stu people come to me all the time and say, hey, Helen, how are you, how are you? And I thought they really care about how, I, how, 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 how I'm doing. So I would start sharing, you know, I just ate this, and I did this, my mom this, and then no one really cares. So they just say, how are you, and then just walk away. So that's kind of like the fun, funny kind of a shock for me, but Curious to know, like uh, Jenny, what was your experience, uh, the U.S. culture or Thunderbird culture? Yeah, I will. I will talk about the Thunderbird culture. Yeah, because so before I came to Thunderbird, I already know that Thunderbird has really good like networking. Like everyone helps with help each other. But like I was like until I see it, I don't believe that actually exists. So 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 I I went to a lot of like um, alumni networking section in Taipei, Taiwan chapter. However, I still like, uh, I still feel disconnect kind of because I have never built that by myself. So after I came to Thunderbird, I start building connection with all my classmates or with um, the, um, the classmates from the same year, like Minas were from the same year. And after that, I was like, oh, oh my gosh, this is like, actually building a connection and then building something that you can never use money to buy like like even for now right now after graduate uh, graduated for a year like all the classmates are we're still like connect to each other and then we had our um, own kind of pub night once a while and then and then we still help each other like like if anyone has any help or, or still still finding an opportunity we are more than happy to help that person because of that connection. So I think that's the, that's the culture shock from um, the Thunderbird culture perspective. I love it. Manas, how about you? Yeah, I think it's quite similar. I was aware of the importance of the global staff on Thunderbird, but I wasn't expecting the deepness I would get when I got there. Uh, the, the level of diversity, 50% or even more, of the students were, were, were international students. And we, we can understand practically what is global communication and how that was important. And when you leave school and when I, when I decided to go to Thunderbird, I had a two, two, like two goals, like after Thunderbird, work in a global environment 
and, and work in a billion scale, like work in a company where I can do a big, big, big results. So, and on Thunderbird, when I left Thunderbird, I noticed how important was global communication, you know, and is really, really tough even doing the school to, to practice it, global communication, you know, because you're gonna see Russians and maybe people from South e, South e Asia or even other part of the world that requires some type of communication skill differently. And we need to be aware of that and we need to take advantage of that because when you go to the re real world, work in a global level, you're gonna face the same type of challenges, you know? So I think Thunderbird was not only teaching uh, theoretically all this stuff, but on classes and all the, uh, the school environment, academic environment is built to teach you that, to, pre to prepare you to be a global citizen. Yeah, I agree. And now, especially, you know, in post-COVID world, another layer of complexity is the virtual communications. So that's, yeah, even more interesting. Anyway, so, uh, Sas, I'm curious to know, like, your career journey from EY, AD Kearney, now you're the managing director, like, how, how did you manage or navigate your career? What have you been doing? Uh, might need to unmute yourself. Thank you. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, the focus was was always on consulting. That kind of helped, right? Right from when I came to Thunderbird, um, the focus was I want to be in consulting, and kind of that kind of narrowed my scope quite a bit because you have only so many hours. Uh, and EY was like a great uh, starting place, right? Because it's it's a great firm, it's a good culture, and you learn quite a bit. And then I think from there, I think it's just a matter of networking and capitalizing on the opportunities. I mean, AD Carney was again through a friend of mine who was at AD Carney, and then he wanted me to come and join him. And from there, I followed another mentor right now at FDI. But the, the overarching theme was pretty much you, you have connections and then you have contacts that, you know, when you're new to the country, you kind of make those connections yourself. But then you kind of just over kind of time, it builds up and then you just follow, follow them along sometimes for the journey as well. I think that's what would help as an international student because we don't have the connections and the luxury we have back home where we know a lot of people. So here, I think uh, the more you invest in making those connections, I think it just pays off. How do you ma maintain your network? Do you just have regular coffee stuff? How, how does that work? Yeah, so I do, I do. Uh, even if it's not coffee, um, there's always a way for me to just kind of make sure I'm reaching out uh, every three or four months, whatever it is, right? because you also don't want to be very opportunistic. You don't want to reach out only when you want something, right? You kind of want to make it a constant connection and then you want to offer more, right? Before you ask for more, you want to give more. And then the more you think of their ideas, their things, and you offer that, next time when you, ask, you want something, they are always there to help you out. So it's, it's give first before you ask. Definitely. And I hear uh, students say this all the time, like I, I'm, you know, I'm a student, what, how can I help them? But sometimes you never know, like if students just share your current Thunderbird experience with alumni, that's interesting from alumni's perspective as well. So don't feel like you're always asking for stuff. There are definitely ways students can contribute, um, like two way three, if you will. Yep. Yeah. Um, transitioning to uh, Manas, the typical, the traditional campus recruiting normally multinational corporations come to Thunderbird, the traditional MBA, MGM profile is around four to five years of work experience. And then we have the experienced professional and young professional group. So the young, young professional is zero to one year of work experience. So those are kind of the more traditional uh, profiles that companies are looking for. Um, Manas, your profile is more on the experienced higher side director level and above and then so when you were approaching your job search when you were a student how what did you do differently like how how should students if they fit that pro profile what should they do okay uh if we have more experience like i was a senior executive in my country when i left my like my last company in brazil uh, you need to be aware of the how the acad academic industry works in us so recruiters are looking for basically when they, they go to career fairs or so on, they want like professionals with three to five, six years old of experience to become future, future leaders. So it's in many cases, they don't have in their pocket positions for experienced students, but you need to 
to, to understand how to build the data opportunities for you first. I think you should be aware and looking for internships that require more experience. A lot of internships are basically the same in companies. I mean, you're gonna do a bunch of tasks that won't, you won't have a big deliverable. So, but many internships are requires from you to have more experience. You're gonna have a big deliverable, a big project. So you need to be focused on, you, you, you cannot forget like uh, uh, internships on Google, on Amazon, it's okay, not a problem, okay? It's good for you. But if you can find in, uh, uh, um, internships where it, it requires more experience, in my case, I, was, I did an internship on sales compensation on HP. Uh, that was a very complex environment. I, I worked without any manager because my manager quit in two weeks. So I worked by myself for, for, for a couple of weeks and I received a prize as the best project of the year. And that was really tough because it really required a very experienced approach to negotiate with high leaders in a high level, directors and VPs. So that was very positive for, to me because I was uh, aware of the challenges on managing sales compensation process in company. So that was a positive thing, thing for me. And after that, I, I was looking for uh, opportun job opportunities that require more experience. So for example, now I work uh, managing uh, programs in a global level. So uh, probably a regular intern, a, 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 a recent graduate graduated, was not probably experienced enough to do things I'm doing now, just because it requires more experience. So my companies know was aware about that. So they were looking for people with more experience. So you need to look for the, this experience uh, that that fits with your profile. Secondly, network, we know that's important, So, but do network with people within Thunderbird that are in the same uh, spot, you know, in the same, that are in the same, uh, they have the same problem, let's say, per se, than you. So be aware of people that are more experienced on Thunderbird, you know, to, to share experience with them, what type of companies that are looking for, what type of uh, jobs that are looking for, companies that are more willing, and you need, to create a good relationship with recruiters, you need to share what you are capable to do because eventually most of the recruiters, they are not prepared to offer something for experienced people, but you can share with them what we can do. And I promise you, if you, if you have a good pitch about how you can do and what we can do, they probably gonna be more willing to hear your history because if you are more experienced, you are putting more on the table at this point of your at this point of your life. You, you, we are doing a more a bigger sacrifice, you know. You know because probably maybe you're gonna have kids or you're gonna have a husband. You're gonna have a wife waiting for you every day, and so that sacrifice is huge. I, I and probably people will notice, you know, properly if you have the right pitch to explain that. Yeah, that's totally. Yeah, make definitely makes sense. Um, I think sometimes when people are in the job seeking status, it's easy to forget that, you know, I have so much value that I can add to the company. You need me as well. So I think it's important also to remember that and then communicate your value, not just to the recruiter, but also the hiring managers as well. It's Absolutely. so vital. So yeah. every time, if you're experienced, if you are start talking with a recruiter, start the conversation saying, I have something different for you that anyone else in this fair can not for you guys. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to show you what I can do for you. Start like this, you know, be, be courageous, you know, don't be shy. I know I'm very experienced in, uh, you know, please don't do that, you know, be courageous, Sh you know, show yourself, show you what you can do it. Perfect, perfect. 100% opposite, uh, Jenny, I'll transition to you. So your profile was on the extremely, like the greener, younger side. But then I remember you were so active. You're a straight A student. You got your internship job uh, before most of your classmates. So what's your strategy? What did you do? Yeah, so I would say first things, actually, it's also what we just learned from Saz and Minaz. It's actually know what you want. And I think that's really hard for people who just graduated from undergrad or just have uh, one or two years um, working experience and then looking for a transition to another um, career path. So I think knowing what you want can definitely scope down 
and then be more specific on like job hunting or like actually some things that you want to do on campus that actually will benefit yourself. So I think that's the first things and very important. And I know it's hard and then, but it's never too late to actually figure out what you want. And I think the next one I want to mention, it's definitely cherish the opportunity that CMC create um, all the time on campus. So I was, I was an, a student worker uh, uh, for CMC when I was at Thunderbird. And then I know that um, school and CMC actually creates a lot of like good um, inf information session. And then like a lot of companies actually visit, um, visit the campus. And so just, I would say don't hesitate to join that, those uh, events. And then sometimes I know like even myself, when I was a student, I would read the company profile. I would read the, the information of the event. And I was like, eh, this is not something that I want. Maybe I should just skip it and then do something else. However, like after I go to, I, I went to some of those events that I never expect to actually gain or, or gain something, something that I, I would never thought that I would learn from those events. And I actually did learn something and I actually did get um, extra connection from those events. So I will say um, what I did differently is I go to, uh, I went to see a CMC event pretty often. And, and also like other, other things other than CMC events, like um, being in the, in the student club, interacting with other people, build that connection with your um, classmate. And then like what I did is I, I joined as a campus ambassador. So you have a lot of, a lot of opportunities to talk to people within the um, Thunderbird at that moment. And then also having connections, starting with talking to the prospective students and then join all the events that, that create um, opportunity for you to meet people. Because I think that's um, very important and that's what I did differently when I was at Thunderbird. Yeah, because connections can happen anywhere. Sometimes you're just in an Uber and then started talking to the driver. All of a sudden, maybe there's a lead, you know, you just never know. But keep our minds open. Anything is possible. Definitely agree. Uh, Sass, I'm curious to know, because you've been in hiring positions for many, many years. And then, so what, what are some of the hiring trends that uh, you've noticed? Or what are some of the key things that you're looking for when you are recruiting? Um, so the hiring trends, I think, I mean, as we all know, right, the last couple of years has been a little challenging for international students. So, um, I mean, consulting is one area where we, we hired a lot of international students, right? But even for us, in the last couple of years, we have definitely come down to 50% international, 50% U.S. citizens, right? Even though we don't say it out, I mean, it's kind of becoming like a new norm, if you will. Um, before, I wouldn't have a problem getting all eight international students, right? That's, that's totally fine. Now, it's a little difficult. So, I, all I'm saying is that's just getting a little more challenging uh, from a recruitment trend perspective, but also uh, it gives an opportunity to how you want to distinguish yourself as a candidate, right? Um, and what we're looking for recently uh, in the last couple of years that I've been getting recruiting is, number one is, I mean, the resume, resume is good. But you know, you're looking for some kind of a overarching theme, like w what is driving your purpose and stuff like that. The purpose thing is getting bigger and bigger, right? So when you build a resume, uh, figure out what is the story you wanna tell, not just like I'm good in accounting or finance or marketing, but your, your true purpose is doing something for a company to drive something, right? And how does that your, your experience aligns to that? So crafting that story is good right now from a trend perspective. Everybody, every company is moving towards purpose, so that's really good. Um, number two also is um, getting a lot of, especially if you're on campus, uh, doing a lot of uh, consulting, small term internships, if you will. Like, I mean, find that there's so much going on in Arizona, right? I mean, I did consulting for like a furniture store when I was in Arizona. So find a lot of those things because we are starting to look for, you know, if, if the candidate is good, and if it's international, why should I be hiring this person? I need a little more points to convince my case, right? So the more points you can get to differentiate yourself if you're international, I think that'll be good. So the more practical experience you have, rather, regardless if it's you know work experience, internship, project, everything, the more you can practice, the better, basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Menas um, Curacao learn about is just so challenging when you don't have local work authorization to find employment. It just so it's so hard. Um, I think it's obvious for all. I'm wondering, like, what was uh, something that's really memorable, the challenge you, that you faced, and then how did you overcome that? Um, I think, Ellen, when you are you were you are coming to U.S., you know, to have your international experience, you need to be aware of the challenges we have, the constraints. So, first secret: no complaints. I've seen so many international students every day complaining how hard it was. You know, it doesn't add anything else. That's the game. You, you, you need to learn with the game. I mean, just fucking things you can do and what you need to do. And what that means, that means you need to apply for more jobs. You need to spend more time in job research as did SAS, but please don't miss class, you know? Uh, but that's the point. You're gonna, you're gonna spend, you need to spend more time searching for jobs. You need to spend more time uh, applying for jobs. It, it, and you know, and applying for job is not cop and paste. And that's the problem. Angelique know, knows what I'm talking about. You know, each application is a unique process. You know, it, if you cop and paste the why you wanna work for that company, I'm sorry. You know, the eyes of a recruiter is well-trained to identify cop and paste stuff. To apply for a company, you need to spend a little time searching for that company, the, why you wanna work, why your profile, is a good match for that company, why you like the values and so on. You need to mention that on the application process. So each application must be unique and eventually resumes must be, you know, change it to fit with that for that company. So you need to apply even more in Ethan sessions. So the career management, CMC on Thunderbird, they will work absolute hard, really, really hard to bring companies, you know, and you need to take advantage of that which means you need to attend as many uh, info sessions you can. Even you know that company don't, uh, don't usually accept international students. It's not, you know, you need to go there to have opportunity to talk with, uh, 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 with the recruiters because the more time you spend practicing, practicing your pitch, the better you're gonna become. You know, you can get advice from recruiters, you can increase your network, with companies and so on. So I've seen so many times in Thunderbird, companies that are not used to hire international students just because the, that T-Bird was so skilled to introduce himself and he could he was like uh, able to create opportunities and companies. So just work hard, be concentrated, create network within Thunderbird with people that are share the same type of jobs you want and so on. And you're gonna you're gonna be successful, I'm sure. Yeah, I know. I don't know if you guys heard something called the brick wall. So basically, you know, the brick wall is the one that's to stop the those candidates or those people who don't want this enough. So if your goal really is to find a job in the U.S. after graduation or find a job somewhere outside of your home country afterwards, all the challenges and barriers are there, and then only the ones that are willing to kind of power through that will be successful. So I think it's, it's tough to stay motivated because it's such a um, hard journey, but I think it's definitely worth it. Uh, Jenny, how about you? I remember your visa situation was very interesting as well. So we'd love to hear your Yeah, so yeah, so that, that story was very interesting and it actually happened just last year. So, so yeah, so after, uh, before I start my OPT, which is um, the visa that you use after graduation for international student, um, you need to get a card, which is called EAD card in order to work in the US for a year for the OPT um, session. And um, the USPS lost my card on their way. And then I was only like one or two weeks um, before my start day with um, my current company. And it's, as every, most people know, um, it's impossible to get the card, a, a new card right away from, um, from the USCIS. And so I was like struggling. I was like, uh, what, am I, what am I going to do? And then that was actually really frustrated because without that card, I can't work. So after, um, after all, I, I start Googling, I start talking to um, my T-Bird connection, um, seeing if 
anyone else has the same situation because that actually happens a lot every single year. So I, I actually connect with a senator, a local senator here in Denver, and then I would never thought that I would talk to a senator. And so I talked to the senator, and then the senator helped me to um, process everything um, within 30 days to reapply the card. And then I also talk, I also negotiate and talk to my company saying, hey, this is basically not our, uh, not my fault. And it's a loss of both sides. And then um, can we try to find a, uh, a, um, a solution? And then, so in the end, we found a solution online that if you lost the card, you can actually reapply it and then use the, the form that you reapply and then, and then take it to the company and, and then to just bring the car within 90 days and you can, so you can still start working right away. So that's the solution that actually solved that issue. And that was a long journey. And, and so if anyone in the future facing similar situation, feel free to contact me because, um, because that was actually not fun to deal with. And so go back to the question itself. I think the challenge that I um, always, um, always have like still till now is kind of come back, go back to what Seth just mentioned about the resume. It's, it's, it's very hard in the very beginning as an international student from a culture that do not have networking and networking wasn't, isn't that, that important back in my culture. And just, just to figure out how to sell yourself, like, how, like what's the quality that I have? How, how can I be confident enough to talk to people that I've never talked talk to and then, and then sell whatever I have and then, and then make, and then make sure and, and make sure that that person get the message and then knowing my quality. So I think that was the biggest challenge that I ever had after I joined Thunderbird and then start learning and building that networking. So that actually goes back to what Seth just mentioned about um, how, 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 like what's the stories within your resume that that's interesting to tell the recruiter or to the people that you're talking to. So, yep. Yeah, like our culture, we encourage hum being humble, not bragging and all of that. So definitely a struggle for um, a lot of us for sure. Um, hey, can, I, can I share one experience on that one real quick? My, my real story, and I think most of you guys can relate to this if you're international. I was in my final rounds at a CMC center for MTV networks. And uh, the, the doors were pretty thin, so you can hear what everybody's explaining inside. And uh, as I was hearing some of my good friends explaining their experiences, and I was like, man, I can't explain like that, right? In my experience, I would be like, two sentences, this is what I did. And that's just the cultural thing, right? So I think we should get used to like, I mean, I wouldn't say bragging, but kind of, Elevating your experiences and saying a good story around it. It's not natural to come if you're international, right? You didn't grow up here. Uh, it's, it's tough. It's not easy, but that's the only way you, you have to do that. It is what it is. Yeah, definitely. I love it. Uh, Sats, I want to ask a quick follow up. So besides like networking and then performing, anything else that international students, students can do to stand out a little bit comparing to the U.S. colleagues? Um, I think the, the, the advantage you're going to have if you're international is the good thing is, uh, this is latest trend as well, right? For example, FDI Consulting, we have a huge push for diversity hire right now, right? So while there is a uh, legal regulations against international, the diversity push is helping the internationals as well. So there's like balance there, right? Uh, so it's not too bad uh, of a mix right now from a story perspective. The push should be on the resume like we all talked about. And I, and I like Minaz's story, right? Please do not cut, copy, paste your stories or your resumes or your cover letters. People easily see that. I see so many invitations come from Thunderbird students who have the same cut, copy, error messages, and I don't respond to that, right? So take some time to tailor your message. That's always helpful. I think that's, uh, and then uh, while I say it's a numbers game on how many people you reach out to, it has to be calculated. Don't reach out to everybody in, in the world, right? You want to do consulting, pick five firms and pick EY, for example, exhaust your network in EY, focus on that. You know that you've done EY, then move on to KPMG. So pick like each firm and move that way. Otherwise, either you're going to go to the same people over and over or you'll do some mistakes. So kind of have a plan about how to do it. Focus is good. That will help you. 
Perfect. I love it. Ellen, can I add anything? Just one thing, one more thing about career fairs. So international students, they come to school, they spend like fifty, sixty thousand dollars in 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 school plus living expenses and so on. It's a big project, a lot of money, but they are not willing to spend five hundred dollars to go to a career fair. This is something that doesn't make sense for me. You know, and you can get you can get some some sponsorship for career fair tickets and eventually other things. But, you know, spend that money. You know, you're going to in one career fair, you're going to have opportunity to talk with 30 to 40 different recruiters. You know, I, I, I participated in four career fairs. I already got a job on HP, but I wasn't on another career fair just to see what's going on, to understand a little bit more, maybe something. Uh, could happen even better, you know. So, please take take no no take advantage of their career fairs, that opportunity. It's amazing experience, and that'll be very very helpful for you. And this year is so much easier because everything is virtual now, so it's easier That's to <laughs> participate. Uh, I have my final question for you, but I'd love to encourage uh, our audience to start asking questions, maybe in the chat box, and we can transition to that. Uh, Jenny, maybe start with you as, you know, this whole career thing is such a long journey. Um, after Thunderbird, what have you been doing to stay competitive? Like for me, I, at least I feel like every day I want to work 200% more compared to my American colleagues to prove my value, you know? So I always have that mindset, can really relax, but I don't know, maybe it's just, I'm curious to know about your experience. So first of all, I still stay active, even though I found a job, it's secure, and then I I know what I'm working on. I I still I still um, keep myself active within the company and then interacting with the coworker, just like what I did at Thunderbird. And then also I because of um um the thing that I'm doing internal audit, it's also if if this is going to be my career path for a long time, um, certification will definitely be something that needs to get done. So I'm also in the process of getting my um, cert certified um, internal auditor, so CIA. And and then also I thought um, after Thunderbird, that's done for my study. And then like I, my master's degree, bachelor's degree is done, but. I'm also currently do, uh, doing an uh, EMBA program in IT. So, so because I want to um, do I, IT audit in the future, because that's a trend that every company is toward that, um, um, that path of getting IT audit done in the company. So yeah, so, so just, just don't, don't, don't stop being active after um, you left Thunderbird and just, just know, still knowing what you want to do and knowing what you can, you can improve yourself. Like there's, there's a lot of learning opportunities still outside um, Thunderbird and never stop learning. Yeah. Yeah, the world is changing every day. And now I feel like everyone needs to be familiar with data, data analysis and all that kind of stuff. So if we don't continue learning, then we are a bit way behind already. Uh, Minas, how about you? Well, when I started working the company during the hiring process, I never was asked about data uh, because uh, usually program managers, you know, they are more focused in PowerPoint, network, communication, stuff like that. And, but data and knowledge was part of my life. I think one of the reasons I became successful as a sales manager, sales leader, just because I, I spent so much time analyzing data in my, through all my life. I built my first dashboard. I sorry guys. I built my first dashboard in 1993. So since then, I never stopped, you know, thinking um, uh, in data, in chart flow, and, and you know, and and inputs, outputs, and stuff like that. So and when I started working my position HP, and I added on the top things I need to do data analysis, that was a big surprise for my manager and on my team. They were ne never expected. And I work in an environment where we ha have tons and tons of data available, but it, it's, so, it's so much data that people don't know what to do with it. The question, what are you gonna do? What we can do? What is the next idea? So, and I, I, and I learned how to build by myself dashboards on Power BI. I learned DEX, which is the D Power BI coding. And I learned by myself and I, pay for, I paid for coaching sessions 
to learn the coding sides I could not figure out by myself. And I, you know, hours and hours with, with people teaching me the coding I could not uh, uh, understand by myself. And I could build things that the people never expect before on, 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 on HP. And the best thing was I could see uh, interpretation of the numbers, the senior leadership on HP, they could, not, could never seen before. You know, because the data was there somewhere. No one never took the data, you know, to manage that and transform the data information and, and then having action into data. And so things I were doing, I'm doing now at HP, it's becoming bigger and bigger because I could show the impact we were doing through data. So if I have a piece of device for you guys, no matter what you do, probably you're gonna, you need to manage the data somehow. I'm, you, I'm not telling you need to be a data analyst, I'm not talking about that, but you need to be able to handle all fairly a spreadsheet. If you can, uh, you know, add maybe Tableau in your life or Power BI, whatever, just to organize data in a better, better shape, that'll be a big, big plus in your life. I promise. So I invest, I'm investing a lot of time on YouTube videos, you know, tutorials and how to improve my data skill because at this point of my life, that be, the, the data has been my best friend ever. You know, and it work in a company as HP, the better we work your data, the, the most attention you're going to receive. 100% agree. Definitely. Um, first question for you. Maybe could you guys share some experiences regarding salary expectations? I'm assuming, um, is it kind of like a salary range situation? Uh, I'll, maybe I'll give you a quick um, update regarding the Thunderbird Every Salary, and then maybe you guys can add more info if you um, have more insight. So I mentioned the experienced professional and young professional, the uh, YoPro people, the every salary is around, I would say a $50,000 range. So not many years of work experience. And then our experienced professionals, uh, their salary range, I would say is between 85,000 to 100,000 plus. It really depends on the work experience. I don't know I if the panel. Yeah, yeah, I think what, what will affect where you're going to live. I live in Houston, for example. It's affordable, uh, considered affordable state. I was living in Houston, right? Uh, before I came to Costa Rica. That will affect if you, if you go to California, probably you need to make more money. The years of experience, yes. Uh, I think the range for experienced people will be 70 to 80 to 100, 120 thousand dollars. That is what I've seen. What we can we can expect? If you're like a beginner, like three four years of experience, 60 to 80 would be reasonable. It depends where you live. Maybe if you go to California, a little bit more. But I think you can expect if you're more experienced, something between 9 and 120 probably. Um, what if the recruiter asks you, like, what is your salary expectation? Like, how do you, how would you guys answer that? Sass, I wonder. Well, I mean, if it is cons consulting, um, I mean, it all depends on who you're interviewing for, right? And there is so much information out there right now. I mean, you can, if you're going for Coca-Cola, you can look at Glassdoor, they will tell you what the salary range is. If it is consulting for Thunderbirds, uh, since I've been down that path, uh, I would say you should stick to, if you're going for a analyst role, stick between a 65 and 75 if you're going for a senior associate role which is like a kpmg or ey and a role i would say stick between an 80 80 and 100 and that's in the right range mm -hmm. just continuing with salary so should we always uh targeting kind of the lowest number in the spectrum no but please i i, I is that daniel is asking that uh, no i mean end of the day, the salary, you, usually what happens is the salary range is an initial question to see if you're in the range. But once you're in the interview process and they like you, there's always room for the numbers, right? So you can always negotiate. And uh, I've never, I mean, for us, at least in, in consulting side of the equation, we have never had a salary discussion with the students because students are very aware of what we pay. So they know walking in what they are, uh, what we will offer. So. Yeah. And, and I Ellen, know... Yeah, maybe ahead. never never accept if you receive an offer never accept the first offer you know they they already have always have five ten fifty percent plus you know to add to, you know to negotiate with you yeah because yeah, i know for um international students sometimes it's like oh you know i i 
they need to sponsor my work visa, so maybe I shouldn't ask for too much, and so maybe I should target the lowest, so at least I can get my foot in the door, but don't ever undersell yourself, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then I will add, it's never, never, don't be afraid to ask, because um, I think what I did last year, it's when I received my offer, and then, and then I reach out to CMC and then CMC helped me to take a look of the offer. And then, and then still like, no, no matter whether you're satisfied with that salary or not, don't be afraid to ask because just like what Minna said, there's definitely some space for some company, like five, 10%. Yeah. Definitely. Another question, uh, Sass, you mentioned that companies are looking for diversity. So how do you find those companies? Um, I, I think it's hard to go and find something like that, right? I mean, the, the overarching theme right now is diversity is a big play for all companies. So you should assume that all the companies are do, going down that path. Uh, so there is no I mean, there is no data behind which companies are doing it. Yeah, but then it's so vital to follow all the business news as well, right? When companies have diversity initiative, it's always out there pretty public. So stay so, yeah, connected with all all the things that's happening out there, it's vital as well. We have six minutes left, so I want to be respectful of everyone's time. I'm wondering uh, for a panelist, do you guys have any final words of wisdom to share with everyone? Maybe, uh, Jenny, do you want to start? Yeah, yeah. so yeah, I was, I was actually thinking about this question yesterday, and then I, I was actually watching a, a YouTube video, and then it's a, it's two um two girls talking about their um their, so they just entered their thirties so about similar age as me so I was like ah oh, this is interesting so what I learned from that um video is believe in yourself like just just because you need you want, you need that confidence and then you need you need you need to know that you like we all know we want to stay in um, the U S or stay in international. Like after you know about that, you just need to believe in yourself. Don't doubt yourself and, and just build that ability. So yeah, so that's my takeaway from that. I think it's not only for girls um, like 30s years, th uh, within their 30 years old or like 20s. I think it's for everyone that it's important. Like we're a T-bird. We learn a lot at school and then we work hard every day. And then so so why not just believe in yourself and then and then when you talk to the employers, talk to other people, just just present whatever you have. Then yeah, and then especially for us as an international student, if you don't believe in yourself, then who will believe in you, right? So yep. So that's my kind of last word for um, all the international students on the call. Yes. How about you? Yeah. So my, my take on this is. Um, when you're on campus, you're going to have some good days and you're going to have a lot of bad days, right? You're going to get a lot of rejects. Uh, when you open those emails in the morning, you always get like, when I see the email saying apologies, something like that, it's always rejects you. Uh, I'm, I'm with Jenny, right? I mean, uh, your success rate is going to be uh, maybe 5%. But at the end of the day, you only need uh, one job offer, right? You don't need 10 anyways. So even though the success rate may be lower when you're looking for a job search, just keep hunting, keep your chin up. Um, end of the day, if you look at the uh, 10 years later or five years later down the lane, everybody will be okay, right? So just realize that you all will be okay too if you're coming to international uh, schools and stuff like that. That's the only thing I, I would have. Don't panic much. Perfect. Um Manas, I'll squeeze one question for you because I, I, I see one addressed to you, but and then you, with your close, closing statement. I'm also a Brazilian with 22 years of professional life. What was your big challenge to get either a job or an internship with such experience? Did you suffer uh, any kind of prejudice because of your age or higher previous experience? Not in Thunderbird. For recruiters, you never detect, you know, because recruiter won't tell you ever, you, you, you're, you're not on the expected age, you know, ever. But what do you need to do uh, if a recruiter is looking for a position, which is, uh, which is for uh, younger people, you need to ask his help to reach out to the right recruiter in the company where we can get, you know, the right position for you based on your, in your experience. I never felt that. I never felt that because, because companies needs, need people like me. You know, I'm a necessary guy in companies. 
you know what I'm talking about because there are complex things that you know uh, just with uh, after 10 years experience you can do it you know you cannot that just start in your first year job uh, first year job so I, I feel I, I always comfortable on Thunderbird and talk with recruiters and company even with more experience Okay. And remember, you're Brazilian. Brazilians are smart. Don't forget it. <laughs> final, <Never>. final, <laughs> final closing statement, Manas. Final words okay. of wisdom. Okay, so guys, take advantage of your academic life. If you are attending classes and going home, this is your academic life. I'm sorry. You're not taking advantage. During my time on Thunderbird, I founded two clubs, which was the Thunderbird Golf Club. I founded the Project, Man Project Manager Club. I work 20 hours a week on the, on the recruitment department, like eight, four hours every day. And I, 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 I helped on the TCG as a director of marketing. So whatever it was happening, I was involved with. I was offered my time. I will offer my skill for free just to, you know, to be part of the community. So enjoying this academic opportunity. Don't stay just in class and home. This is not enough for you because people are seeing what you're doing how willing you are to help and to be part of the community and to share all your experience, to share your time. So take advantage. It's for international students, being in the United States as a full-time student is unique because in my country, I don't have this time of experience. Classes, even in class, and that's it, you know? So take advantage, share your time, share your talent, offer your talent for the school you are studying, share, you know, for whatever you do, be willing, you know, and available to help whatever you do. This is so motivational. I get so pumped up listening to you guys. Uh, thank you all so much for doing the session. I, I, I feel so lucky, you know. Uh, we just have alum amazing alumni like you guys. That's why it's making Thunderbird so special. Um, this has been a great session. I love it. And I'm glad we recorded this. This uh, will help so many other T-Birds down the road. And for all of our audience, uh, we have a few more sessions in, uh, in the future about employment outlook, different happy hours, uh, per different industries, encourage you to join those sessions as well. And with that, thank you, Jenny, Sas, and Anas. Thank you so much for the session. Thanks and so much, you guys. What a pleasure. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank have you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.